Here on the plains of Germany, British tank crews in their chieftains develop the difficult art of communicating by radio. Charlie, Charlie, this is their uh, warning order. Alpha, three tanks, grid, 612-783. Mission, to destroy. Wait, Charlie, right flanking. The Delta, call sign a one zero, three zero, and four zero. To move around a fire base, call sign a one zero, current location. Call sign two zero, with this call sign, will mask and prevent enemy movement. The other ten tanks in your company, them, them you have to control through radio. It's very difficult. You have, you have to convey to them through some metallic voice all the emotions, all the energy that you want them to carry in the situation where they face the enemy. And you want them to be placed in the right position because sometimes two meters makes a difference. The problem, of course, as with any military command, is to know what's going on and to be able to see as far as possible, very seldom possible to see where everybody was. You are the whole time concentrating on what is going on on the radio, as well as using your own eyes and your own feel about all the noises going on. And, of course, you are on the radio uh, forwards as well as backwards. <laughs> When you're in action, the tank commander was either sitting on a very, very small seat or mainly standing up. If he was standing up, he could average chap could just about look over the edge of the cupola. And you'd be standing there for about 12, 14 hours during the day in the summer. In that time, you've got very little exercise in yourself. And we found to start with, we were getting something that was called tank commander's legs. The legs just kept, became very swollen between the knees and the ankles. It's very, very painful. If you didn't take your boots off, if you took your boots off, you'd never... Yet the whole experience of tank warfare, good and bad, has made the men who live in and fight from these armoured monsters a breed apart from other soldiers. The noise is terrific. It's not only the noise of the engine and of the tracks or of the gunfire outside or of your own gun. It's also the noise that's coming through your headphones, the mush, which can be absolutely piercing. It was also, of course, very closed in. It didn't do to be claustrophobic.
Experience has proved that there is no such thing as total protection. To survive, a tank crew must control the means to destroy its attackers. It must have mighty firepower. Commander, gunner, loader, driver. The first three are involved in firing the gun. The real problem on the battlefield of today, as it has been all down the centuries, is how to go forward in the face of the enemy. It is not an easy thing to do the development of weapon systems in all armies tends to favor the defense, tends to make it very difficult to go forward from where you are towards where the enemy is. That that is what the tank was originally produced for and that is what the tank is primarily required for now is a means of getting firepower forward from one place to another in the face of very considerable fire from the enemy. Now you're not going to be able to do that without any arm around you you're not going to be able to do it just in a bulletproof vest. You're not going to be able to do it in a helicopter, which is very vulnerable on the battlefield. You will therefore require a form of mobility, which will get you over the ground, which must be mechanical, because if you're going to take any protection with you, that's got to be moved by mechanical means. The problem for the tank in the future will be just what sort of firepower it's got to carry with it.